Okay, I'm gonna be low key eating an apple during this. Because I'm so hungry. Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. It has been so long. And I seriously apologize for that. But I'm back with a really fun one. If you like to dye your hair, you'll think it's fun. If you don't, you probably won't. For the past month or so, I've had bright red hair. And I mean bright red. Like I'll show you right here. Bright red. When you have brightly colored hair like that, the best thing to do is to wash your hair with cold water. I am far too lazy to do that. It faded so quickly. It faded to like this weird, like my roots were still super bright like up here, but down here it just turned to this weird brownish, reddish color. I knew that I didn't want to touch it up all the time. I didn't want to have to keep going back and keep re-dyeing it. And I missed my blonde hair. So I looked up a lot of videos on Pinterest. I'll link the ones below that really helped me because I could not have figured this out by myself. Um, and I dyed my hair back to blonde. It still has a lot of red undertones, as you can tell. It's still, especially in this light. But compared to what I had before, this is a huge difference. I want to preface this video by saying I'm not a professional hairstylist. I have not gone to school for it. I only know a couple people who even do this stuff. Um, I'm definitely an at-home colorist. I do go to a hairstylist for things like highlights and haircuts. Um, but sometimes I just don't have time to go or I'm just not feeling it, you know. Sometimes it's just easier to do it at home. If you're scared of messing up, like deathly afraid of messing up and you're gonna turn your hair green and it's gonna fall out, if that's your fear, go to a stylist, go to a professional, don't try to do it at home. If you are comfortable with dyeing your own hair, um, you can do it yourself or have a friend help you. It's not a huge deal. Just know that these are the things that work for me. Personally, they might not work for you, so don't yell at me if <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> This is just personally what I did based on from the videos that I watched and the articles that I read and kind of pieced together what worked for me. I started with this brand called Color Oops. Oh, there's a glare, sorry. I was able to find this at Target. Uh, I think you can also get it at CVS, Walgreens, I'm assuming Walmart probably has it. It's basically a color remover, color stripper, whatever you want to call it. It takes any artificial color out of your hair. This stuff smells so bad. I'm just throwing it out there. Use it in a very well ventilated room. And I've been around a lot of bleach and I've been a lot around a lot of hair dye. This stuff smells like rotting flowers. It's so strange. It just smells so bad. My darling boyfriend. I had him do it for me because I sometimes struggle to reach the back and with something like this I did not want it to be splotchy. I can fix splotchy hair color. I cannot fix splotchy stripper. So I went to Sally's and I picked up a bowl and a brush. This was a long time ago that I got these but they obviously still have these. These are standard. Um, because all these things they come in like those bottles that you can do it yourself but I just feel like I have so much more control. It's definitely preference. I just like this way better. So I mixed it poured it in here and had my boyfriend work it on my roots first and then uh, paint it over the rest of my hair and then I let that sit for 20 minutes um, and then I rinsed it out and it turned my hair I'll show you it turned my hair this weird yellow brassy color there were some spots that were still red like red-ish it had definitely stripped out most of the color though I was so excited to see that it actually Work. It's not perfect. It's not like, oh, you put it on for 20 minutes and you're instantly back to blonde. But it definitely is able to get out red. I let it air dry a little bit so it wasn't dripping soaking wet. And then I went in with Wella Toner. This is T18 or Lightest Ash Blonde toner. I wasn't able to get this at Target. Most of the stuff I was, this is the one thing I had to go to Sally's for. Make sure that if you get this, you also get 20 volume 
developer, cream developer. I have a huge bottle, but when I went, I actually saw that they do have little ones for stuff like this. If you're just doing a one-time thing, it's a two to one ratio. So you pour all of this into your mixing bowl. And then what I did was I refilled the, the little bottle that's in here twice uh, and poured it in here and mixed it. Once again, it smelled like death. It's chemicals, it's gonna smell bad. And uh, I painted that on my roots. I did this myself um, since I wasn't as concerned about it being blotchy as I was with the color oops. And it started to turn purple on my head, which if you look at a color wheel, if your hair is orange, yellow, the opposite color are blue, purple. So you want toner, most toner is blue and purple undertones. I brushed that in and then I washed it and it left me with kind of like an ashy, blonde, still kind of yellowy color, but it was definitely a lot more even than it had been before. Checking the time. So when I did the color oops, I just rinsed it out. Um, but when I did the toner, I took a full shower and shampooed with the purple shampoo and conditioned. I went in with L'Oreal Paris Superior Preference Ash Blonde or A8. So it's in a little box like this. This particular color uh, matched my roots and matched my natural hair. My natural hair is pretty much this color. This is another one of those where it comes in a little bottle and you shake it up and it has a little, like, uh, little nozzle to help you put it on your roots. I just, I can't do it that way. So I mixed it in my bowl, let that sit on my hair for 30 minutes. And I just threw a shower cap on over because when I did the toner, it started to like drip. And luckily I was wearing a shirt that I didn't care about, you know, just a regular t-shirt that I didn't care if it got dye on it. So I had that on, so it like dripped on that, so it wasn't a huge deal, but it was still like cold purple stuff dripping down. So when I did this, I made sure to just put on a cheap shower cap that it would stay a little cleaner. And I once again um, just did like a full shower, just shampooed and conditioned. And this right here is the final product. So it kind of still looks relatively strawberry blonde, I think is a good way to put it. But it is a huge difference from where I was before. That is definitely for sure. I'm going to eventually like put in highlights and do some different things to my hair to lighten it up a little bit, but I think it just needs a nice long break. So those are the steps that I took to go from red to blonde. I'm going to put a link to all the products I used down below. So in case you have any questions about you can't remember what type it is, like which toner it was, you can always come back and do a little quick check down there. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you have any questions about dyeing your hair at all, I've dyed my hair in a bajillion times, so many different colors. So if you have any questions about either going to a salon or doing it at home, leave a comment down below. I will try to answer them as best I can. Obviously, I'm not a stylist. If I don't know the answer, I'll direct you to talk to a stylist who knows more than I do. But if you just have questions about where I got the products or how much they were, just definitely let me know. So I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you all next time. Leave this blue neighborhood. Never knew loving could hurt this good. Oh, and it drives me wild.